Hello, Lumberjacks, and welcome to another episode of the Kane Connection. I am, of course, Mr. Daniel Adams, and you will have a number of hosts today as we produce this episode for you, and it's all done remotely. Yes, we're all working on a little bit of each of this video for each story, and we're producing it remotely wherever we happen to be. Um, and of course, the final video will be edited together by our production guru, Mr. Forrest Cavoni. Okay. So please forgive the look of this video as we don't have all the green screens and the fancy technology, but we are going to do our best to still provide you with the news and interests for the Lincoln and Woodstock community. And of course, what's happening around the world, right? So wherever you happen to be, whether you're in your office, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, we hope that everyone is having a good time and you're adjusting well to remote learning. But what is remote learning? Well, we're all doing it, right? Because technology is amazing. Advancements in technology surely outpace society changes, right? And as a result, there are plenty of programs and applications for us to use to enhance your learning experience. I'm talking to you students. So here are some tips at being successful during the next couple of weeks. So guys, use technology purposefully. You're gonna wanna text your friends and play a game on your computer or device, but please limit those episodes of fun. I strongly suggest that you get some fresh air during the, your days here where you're learning inside and staring at a screen. But you need everyone needs exercise. We all gotta do it a little bit more this week, right? Um, there's plenty of tips and tricks and videos out there on getting more active. And I see a push, a push up challenge that's happening on social media. Take part in one of those. So remember, you got to go outside. Um, you had to go outside when you went to school anyway, right? To get in the car, or hop on the bus. So make sure you're getting as much time outside as you would on a normal school day during these couple of weeks. Okay. So get outside, enjoy some, enjoy some fresh air. Um, today, there's a little bit of snow as I'm making this video on Tuesday. Get outside, enjoy it a little bit, right? But do so safely. So now you're going to have a lot of screen time throughout the week. That's, you know, that's already been said, but you need to take breaks. Get up and take a stretch. Give your eyes a rest. I'm having to wear my glasses a little bit early because I've been staring at a screen all morning, okay? So make sure you take care of yourself. Sit at a desk, sit at a table. Try not to be on the couch or slouching maybe like laying on your bed as you're studying. It's gonna be comfortable for a little bit, but trust me, you're gonna fatigue your body even more, okay? Now finally, guys, keep in touch with your teachers. Many of us have set up meetings um, via Google technology to see and talk with you. If you don't wanna be seen on camera, just let us know, but make sure you get the audio going so you can take part in the conversation, okay? Um, check your Google Classrooms at least a couple of times a day. I try to post something in the morning and then a little bit later, okay? So things are gonna change. So make sure you check that. And then finally, guys, don't be afraid to email your teacher if you've got a question. Remember, it's easier to raise your hand in the classroom, but if you're raising it at home, I'm going to have a hard time seeing you, okay? So raise your hand by sending us an email. Do not wait. So if you guys follow these tips and tricks, you will absolutely be successful in continuing your learning experience, okay? That's all I've got for you guys right now. Please have a great weekend, everyone. Hello everyone, my name is Ellen Zimmer, and today we're going to be talking about social distancing. Social distancing can mean many different things. It's when you at least keep six feet away from you and all other people, or stay home and avoid all contact with other people. Some ways to social distance yourself are avoid all social gatherings, only go to the store when necessary, avoid all contact with other people, and, but the most important thing is to stay six feet away from all people at all times. Social distancing can be hard and we're all adjusting to it. But remember, it's not only for your safety, but for the well-being of all other people. Thank you. So this goes out to all of the Instagram users out there. Linwood is now on Instagram. Last week, we created an account for the schools to connect and communicate with our community um, in a fun and interesting way. The username you want to look for is Linwood Public Schools. So the app is being used by a few different employees right now. But if you head on over there and you follow Linwood Public Schools, you're going to be able to see what Mr. Purbinow has been up to over the, the past week as we have been in remote learning. So once again, the username you want to find is Linwood Public Schools. Go check it out. 
I'm Josh Craig, and this is a look at what's new in the world of social media. With everyone staying at home and keeping social distances, an effort has been made by many to keep people up and moving as much as they can at home. Social media platforms have seen trends about exercising and doing yoga at home to stay in shape while gyms are closed. People are doing online exercises and yoga classes to keep the same daily regimen but at home. It allows people who can't even leave their houses to still get up and move during a time where most people are sitting down and doing nothing. There are other ways you can still stay in shape during this time. Do a good amount of push-ups. Move around. Don't sit down at much all day. And eat healthy. And now, it's time for a quick video with Mrs. Crow. Hello, students. I know this social distancing and remote learning and teaching is all a little challenging these days. Uh, and I don't pretend that most of you will watch this. I thought I would share with you a little bit of what the Krills have been up to reading. Um, I have taken advantage of, of a quieter life, no doubt, without evening um, extracurriculars or, or anything for my kids these days. So um, Carver and I continue to get through the Percy Jackson series. We love this, we love this series. He, I'm sure many of you read Percy Jackson in middle school. Um, or earlier than that, uh, but it is like action-packed and everything that connects with Mount Olympus and the Greek gods is really cool. Um, and I think that it's a great way to learn about illusion when you're young. Greta and I are reading Gabriella, which is part of the American Girl Doll series. Um, Gabby loves expressing herself, especially in the dance studio but lately poetry is becoming her art form of choice. And for good reason, Gabby struggles with stuttering and spoken word poetry helps her speech flow more freely. Can she harness the power of her words and rally her community to save liberal arts? I don't know, Greta, I don't know if she can. Um, the two books that I'm reading, <laughs> the two books I'm reading are both young adult books. Some of you have maybe seen them on my on that last, that, that last day I like went through and I just grabbed like anything I could get my hands on. Um, be, things that I hadn't read that have been on my list of, of wanting to read. And this one, some of you have read, it's called One Night That Changes Everything. And it's, uh, it's actually really hard for me to read because it's always my biggest fear um, about some of the things that teenagers deal with outside of school. Uh, but uh, Four Dares, Two Secrets, One Night. Eliza is in a full-blown panic. Her notebook has been stolen. The one that lists everything she wants but is afraid to go after. And the absolute worst person in the world has it. Her ex-boyfriend, Cooper. Life, like it's not bad enough that Cooper was lying to Eliza for their entire relationship. Now he and his friends are blackmailing her. They're giving her just one night to complete the most humiliating tasks on her list or they'll post her secrets online, including the ones that aren't just about her. Eliza's sure of only one thing, she isn't going down without a fight. Cooper may have what's left of her dignity, but she's not the only one with something to hide. Um, this is by Lauren Barkholt, um, and I'm like a third of the way through it, and it's really good. Um, I, I feel, I get that feeling in my gut that it's like hard when you're watching someone else deal with things that are embarrassing and I, I feel like this she connects um i think she connects to a lot of different kinds of kids in high school um and adults who survived high school so there's that and then this one is historic fiction and you know my obsession with um world war ii literature this one is salt to the sea and it's the story of the wilhelm gusloff which actually lost more lives than the Titanic. So basically it was 1945 and um, all of these refugees were headed to the, headed to the ocean um, to get on this ship, which the Russians um, sank and 9,400 lives uh, were lost. Um, so it's winter 1945, four refugees, four secrets, each one born of a different homeland, each one hunted and haunted by tragedy, lies, and war. You might notice there's really good parallel structure in that dramatic intro. As thousands desperately flock to the coast in the midst of Soviet advance, 
four paths converge, vying for passage aboard the, the Wilhelm Gusloff, a ship that promises safety and freedom, but not all promises can be kept. And I'm probably halfway through this one, and it's, it's one of those books where every chapter is written from a different character's point of view, um, so the perspective is amazing. Um, and this one is um, by a woman named Ruda Sepetis, uh, and it's really good. Um, so I might try to read other books that she's done when I'm finished. Uh, but I just wanted to remind you guys that books are a great way of passing the time, and they, they help you escape. They also though, do a tremendous job of internally helping you with your vocabulary, your sentence structure, your fluency, so much beyond just escaping into a good book. So I hope everybody's doing well. I miss you and it's not the same um, not teaching um, from my classroom. So I hope that if you ha need anything, you reach out and, and let me know. And if you're not one of my students and you're seeing this anyway, just know your teachers are, are doing their best. And however we can help from the home front, we will. All right, take care. All right, Monroe, you ready? Monroe. Here we go, the butterfly. Ready? Hi, I'm JJ Goodbill. You may recall that recently there was an essay writing contest sponsored by the New England Outdoor Writers Association. And Mrs. Krill is proud to announce that two Linwood students placed in the competition. Sixth grader Hattie Corey won first place in the junior division and ninth grader Shanna Joppo earned an honorable mention in the senior division. Congratulations to Hattie and Shanna. The last couple weeks have been difficult for sports, not only here in New Hampshire, but in professional leagues as well. The New Hampshire Interscholastic Association decided to cancel the rest of the high school basketball tournaments. They also have postponed the start of baseball season. The National Collegiate Athletic Association is what runs collegiate sports, and they were supposed to have a March Madness tournament, which is a tournament watched by millions of people, and it was canceled. They have also postponed the baseball season. Professional sports associations in the United States are also taking a hit because of this. The National Basketball Association has postponed play. Play seized as soon as one of their players was found with the virus. The National Hockey League has also postponed play. They found uh, one of their players also had the virus. Major League Baseball has postponed the opening day by at least two weeks. As we learn more, we will give you the information. Great reporting, JJ. I know like many of you out there are excited for sports to be up and running again, especially spring sports at Linwood for baseball and softball. That's for sure. That is going to end our episode for today and this week, everybody, this special remote learning episode. So thank you for joining us. Um, but we want to hear from you. Send us an email at tv at lynn-wood.org. Tell us about what's happening in your world and in our Lincoln and Woodstock community. So send that news on to us. You can also connect with us on Facebook. Find the Kent Connection and you can send us messages there as well. But for now, on behalf of all of the Kent Connection team, I am Mr. Adams. Have a great weekend, everybody. Well, breaking news, everybody. If you didn't just see the update, Governor Sununu just announced a little while ago on WMUR News 9 Live that he was going to be extending our remote education from home until at least May 4th. So we can get through this together, everybody. Stay safe, have a good weekend, and may the 4th be with you. Bye, everybody.